PSA Reloaded, man. It's your boy, Three Letter Man. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Y'all see where to follow your boy at. Hit the like button also. I appreciate that. Y'all see the title of this one, man. Let's talk about it. So, first of all, let me say shout out to Math Hoffa and my expert opinion. Him and his team have taken a talent to South Beach. Let's give Math his props on that first off. And if you're not new, of course, we know Math's story, us in the battle rap community, right? For what this brother is doing right now for his channel, for his show, for his network, for his brand, where Math's come from, the infamous dose, disaster situations, you know, the culture in, in love with Math for a minute, in and out of love with Math for a minute. The brother's had a almost like Maths, he's, he's one of the few battle rappers, him, Surf, and a few other brothers, but him and Surf, I feel like we've watched them go through ups and downs within this culture at a high, high clip, right? So for this brother, what he's doing right now, man, I think it's dope. He just had Dame Dash on his show, on my expert opinion, and the conversation that Math and them had for this seven minute clip was the greatest rap crew of all time. That's a very subjective conversation to have. There's region implications, demographic implications, your product of your envi environment implications when you have that conversation. I personally don't think there's a right or wrong answer. There's some things that are kind of obvious more than others, but obviously Dame is saying that the greatest rap crew of all time is Rockefeller. That's the umbrella that he was up under with him, Dame, and Kareem Berg, um, Biggs Berg. That's Maul, who used to be on Maul, um, Joe by the Podcast, Maul. That's Maul's brother, Biggs, who was down with um, Rockefeller. So they started speaking about the criteria of what makes, the, what makes a group get consideration for greatest rap group of all time. Now, Dame is saying because he helped get a rapper or his crew to be billionaires. Now, Dane, real quick, who was really a billionaire over there, Rockefeller, besides you, you, I mean, Jay-Z? I mean, if you look at the roster that whole had, we have Bleak, Memphis Bleak Beans, Young Gunners, Freeway, um, Emilio Sparks in them, what's that, um, Emil, The Rangers, um, Christian, Rel, Donald Sauce used to be in and out, in and out of the crew and everything like that. But I disagree on Rockefeller, though, respectfully. You know, it ain't like when Jay came into the game, like, Bleak has always been here, of course. Beans didn't come to, like, 98, though, right? So Hove already had two albums under his belt before Beans, and he really created Rockefeller. You know, if you want to say when Dipset came... Even I always say the thing with Dipset, which, the thing I like about Dipset when it came to Rockefeller is that they wasn't asking, they, they didn't need Jay-Z's help. Like, no disrespect to Beanie Siegel, but when they do the, um, on, on Beanie Siegel's Truth album, right, when Jay-Z put the Anything song on there, that was a marketing employee on Rockefeller. I guess they felt they caught wind another Andy song, but nah, Hove, that wasn't it, though. But throwing that on Bean's album as a solo joint, Okay, cool. All right? But I don't think that makes, because you helped Jay-Z get a billionaire, make the Rockefeller the greatest rap crew of all time. I think Jay and Beans, I mean, Kanye part of himself. Okay, Kanye, my bad. Um, but Jay, Jay and Beans and Ye really stand out when you look at the Rockefeller days, though. You know what I mean? And then to me... Was Kanye really hard Rockefeller? Okay, he did joints for Hov and them. He did a couple of joints for Beans and me and them. Okay, cool. But the greatest rap crew of all time? Ugh. Making a rapper a billion dollars is that? Listen, I'm glad Dame is getting his flowers, man. You know what I mean? He's getting his flowers as he should. We go back to Dame with the dice dance and stuff like that. He was the mouthpiece. <laughs> The loud mouthpiece of Rockefeller. He did all the dirty work, right? If you look at their crew, Jay didn't really speak that much. Um, Biggs didn't really speak up that much. We always see Dame in the forefront. What was that? Was it Fade to Black? Or one of them DVDs back in the day. 
where we saw Dame going to studio, going to um, Def Jam offices, I believe it was. And he started barking on people for hope and stuff like that. And same thing with, with um, Cash Money. Look at Birdman. Birdman is Birdman and Slim. But Slim, you rarely heard Slim say anything. Well, Slim was like a 6'5", at that. But you rarely heard Slim say anything. Go back to Battle Rap. If you look at um, when Norbs was on URL, he was doing most of the talking for Smack and Beasley and Chico. They weren't really the ones saying a lot. It was Norbs who was the mouthpiece. Same thing with Sue Surf. Prince was Sue Surf. Surf was the battle rapper waving the URL flag. No other, no other battle rapper, shout out to Tay Rock, but because of Surf's personality, it kind of hits a little different, right? Now, Dame Dash does give me Murder Mook vibes. And what I say that is, when you interview Murder Mook, man, you want to talk about Mike in a conversation. That brother's so good at that, that sometimes you feel like you're catching a migraine. And I feel Dame is, is very similar. You know, he's going to fight you on everything you say, hang on to every word you say. And he, he does that in a lot. You know? Dame, since you couldn't answer this one question that Math asked you, Math asked you, you know, compare Wu Tang Clan and Rough Riders, and you feel like you were stuck. Well, Dame, there's no reason to be stuck on there because, with all due respect to Rough Riders, they didn't come into the game like the Wu. When we first heard Wu Tang Clan, we heard protect your neck. When DNY was building up Rough Riders, I mean, shout out to Eve, RIP DMX, The Locks, Drag On, what's that young one was probably over there. Some other dudes I probably forget, forget on the top of the dome, but I mean, the Rough Riders, do we even have a collaboration song together better than Protect Your Neck and Triumph? And then you talk about nine dudes. Nine dudes, you know what I'm saying? You're about nine rappers, MCs of the Wu. And I'm not, listen, some of y'all would say, oh, DMX, he's the X Factor in the whole conversation. Okay, fine. You want to say DMX sell two, al two, um, two albums in one year and um, his debut album was better than Method Man's debut album? Okay, fine. I'll say that. As Dark and Sell is hot, it is better than Takao, right? But I'm sorry, man. I got to go with the Wu, man. I I I'm sorry. It was an era. Listen, I, I, don't, I would never put, I can't put Swizz over the RZA. The RZA came with his own sound. I'm not saying Swizz came in there with a, with a he sounded like anybody else in production. But I'm sorry, man. With the Wu-Tang Clan, I'm sorry, bro. With the unpredict, unpredictable talent, natural game? Nah, bro. It's the Wu for me. That's why I don't, and that's no shade to Rough Riders. And then you got to look at it like this. When did Wu-Tang Clan drop 36 Chambers? 93? So we're talking 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99. That's like a, they, had, they had like a four or five year gap over, over the Rough Riders. So how can I put the, the, the Rough Riders over? I can't do that, bro. I can't. I can't. Meth was an MVP, a low-key MVP candidate of 94. And you can say DMX was MVP of the year when he dropped two albums and everything like that. You can say that. It's dark as hell. It's hot and flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. So... You can make that argument. I get it. Right? And it's the woo for me, man. Ugh. But then I agree with Mecca, though. Mecca said when he broke down his criteria of why, of why you should make a list conducted of the greatest rap crew of all time, um, the way Mecca broke this down, it's like, doesn't hits, lyrics, influence, does all that play a part? And I feel it does play a part. I mean... You got to look at the woo, man. I mean, 36 Chambers drops. Meth drops. Old Dirty Bastard drops. Only built for Cuba Licks. And I'm sorry, I'm going to say this right now. And some of y'all got to catch feelings. It's all right. And this is not me shading this man's album. I love DMX. But do I think DMX, it's dark as hell, it's hot. And the flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood is better than Ray Kwan's Only built for Cuba Licks? No, sir. I don't. Not to purple tape. Respectfully. Respectfully. So, and let's not try to play them out. Now, Dane, this is where you lose me, bro. Y'all talking hip-hop on a hip-hop channel. And you up there talking about you don't want to judge men. You don't want to judge the criteria 
of men and stuff like that. Like, bro, this is hip hop. So that, I mean, Matt, you, you let this man cop out and say, I don't want to judge men. I want to judge women. Bro, this is hip hop, bro. Come on, Dame. We're not going to act like when you were executive, executive, um, back in these streets in the nineties, you weren't comparing things. Come on. You wasn't comparing what, what y'all was doing compared to bad boy to what other crews are doing. Come on, Dame. We're not doing that. It's hip hop, bro. Come on. I don't like critiquing men. Like, we're talking about crews in hip hop. What are you talking about? That was kind of weak and kind of stupid to me, respectfully. You know what I mean? We're talking about crews in hip hop. I would have loved to hear more conversations of y'all talking about the boot camp click. You know what I mean? G Unit, Juice Crew, or Marley Marlin, and Master Ace, Craig G, Big Daddy King, G Rapping them. I would love to have those kind of conversations. Cash Money, DITC. You know, Aftermath Shady, TDE, Name the Tongues. I would have, and a multitude of other crews out there. I would have loved to hear those kind of conversations, but I don't know, man. It's your boy three. Leave comments and tell me what you think, man. One.